This is the desired destination for America's top gymnast, Tokyo, Japan, where the Olympics will take place less than a year from now. Tonight, they're in the east end of the Power and Light District of Kansas City, where inside the Sprint Center, they'll compete at the 2019 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. And leading the way, of course, is the biggest name in the sport, Simone Biles. The four-time Olympic gold medalist has already made some history this week and is looking for more, along with a sixth national all-around title tonight. We welcome you to the Team USA Champion Series presented by Xfinity. Tonight, it's the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. It's been filled up for a while and it's been hopping all night long. They're getting ready in anticipation of Simone Biles out there and the rest of the top athletes who hope to be headed to Tokyo next year. Simone resting at the moment, but a comfortable lead. Didn't have her A game on night one, but still that lead. Suni Lee, just a 16-year-old, first year on the senior level. Then Jay Carey, Riley McCuster, Leanne Wong, only a 15-year-old competitor here in the mix as we are off and running on night two. Glad to have you with us. Terry Gannon alongside the Olympic gold medalist, Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin. It's rare that you have an opportunity to watch greatness. We've got that, guys, tonight. And if you love history, you love sports, you love watching Simone Biles because it seems like Nastia, every time out, she makes some history. Well, you know, Terry, she is the absolute greatest of all time. And in my opinion, no one even close, comes close in that discussion. And it's not just because of the gold medals and the titles that she's won, but year after year, she keeps doing skills that we never thought was even wow. possible. And she makes it look so easy. You know, a lot of people said that the real Olympics was Simone's coronation, but if she was queen then, she's immortal now. Just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I agree with you, Nastia. She is an icon, but an icon with something to prove. Simone Biles is all about striving for perfection, and she's the first one to say that that didn't happen night one. She has got a chip on her shoulder, and I think we're going to see some magic, some sparks, and some history. Angry, determined, coming into night two. You go back to night one. It was really a range of emotions from start to finish, guys. You know, and this is how she started, unveiling a brand new, extremely difficult pass, triple twisting, double back. Not how she wanted to start the competition, and that really made her upset, went off to the uneven bars, and the look on her face says it all, but there was a little redemption for her. Yeah, she was not happy with either that floor mistake, which is her new move that'll be named after her, but look at this, double twisting, double somersault off beam. I never thought I would see it done in a competition onto a hard mat, but that's exactly what Simone Biles does. She does the unbelievable. And she's very relaxed at the moment, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Hey, this place has been hopping for a while. They got in here early. They did because they want to see the queen. <laughs> and watching her, even in the warm-ups, every single time she went, whether it was a warm-up, whether it was a competition set, the crowd really just went wild. All right, so looking for that sixth national all-around title. It'll be the most in the modern era. Saw so Sam McCulloch do just the same. They've won theirs in the same year. See if Simone Biles can do it again tonight here in Kansas City. So we start with Michaela Skinner, an alternate back in 2016. So she barely missed the team, went to college, University of Utah. She was a star there. NCAA all around runner up twice, but said unfinished business. I've got to come back and make a run toward Tokyo. And you know, she freely admits that a lot of people doubt her and say that she can't do it. And she should just go back to college, but she loves what she's doing. She was so close, but watch this right here. Huge combination. Oh, oh wow. so hard. And that's unfortunate. I have not seen her fall on that since we've been in Kansas City. It was great night one. Or she'll lose a full point in deduction for coming off the beam. You know, and starting on the balance beam, no matter what kind of competition you're competing at, it's never easy. The nerves, the adrenaline rush that you have at the beginning of a competition is so much higher than later in the competition. 
So what would you rather start on, Nastia, when you competed? I, I like starting on vault. You did. <laughs> The, the true Olympic order. Tim? Uh, for me, I started on pommel. I love pommel horse. You never let go. Grabbing on at all times. <laughs> Dismount right here. Oh, baby. Way to come back, but that does not erase the fall. But just being here, I spoke with her coach, Lisa Spini, right before the competition began. She said, I am thrilled. There she is, right there, with how Michaela is doing. I thought at this point, maybe we could pull off two routines at these championships. She's doing all four. And take a look, this is where she had the fall. And, and really from that first element, the back handspring, she was a little bit off to the side, tried to hold on, unfortunately. As we always like to remind people, that beam is only four inches wide. Not easy at all. Tough to come back from, too, so early to have that mistake. We'll get the number for her in a moment, but Jade Carey now, third coming into the night. She gets set on vault. The 19-year-old from Phoenix, she won the U.S. title on vault in a second on floor. She's actually taking a different route than most of the athletes, doing the Apparatus World Cups. And at this point, she is the leader. So if it doesn't change, she's already going to Tokyo. She just keeps getting better, doesn't she? she? She really does. We saw her a few weeks ago at the qualifying event for the national championship. Didn't do as difficult a vault here. She is ready to go. So very intricate. We'll see this vault later on from Michaela Skinner and Simone Biles, half on to the board, half onto the table, laid out front with one and a half twists. This has a maximum score of a 16.0. The judges will then put pen to paper and deduct away. Probably going to be somewhere around a point off, maybe, in deductions. Hopefully a little less, but we'll see. Guys, back to that Olympic team. Four athletes on the Olympic team, so it's down from the five that we used to see, and she opted out of the World Championships to try out there to make that team to give herself another chance in terms of the individual apparatus, and that is in the rules now, and looking great, as you say, she's top of the standings. On both floor exercise and vaulting, I think that she will earn that spot, but what she truly wants, she wants to be a member of that four-person team for USA in Tokyo. Aminar. Oh my goodness! And that was huge! Huge. So much more power than she had night one. Unfortunately, I think she was a little surprised at how much power she had. Wasn't able to control the landing as well as she did. But for her to do these two vaults here, great step in the right direction. Simone Biles getting set for the balance beam momentarily. But take you back to night one. What did we say about history? <laughs> history was made right here. Double twisting, double back. First person in the entire world to compete this skill. She already has two names in the rule books that bear the Biles name. That would be the third one. She has one that she wants to get done on floor exercise, which would be the Biles two on floor. is very tricky. No one spins as fast as Simone on that. I spoke with her coaches, Laurent and Cecile Landy, before the competition, and I asked them, I know she's going to do the triple-double on floor. What do you think about beam? They said it is 100% up to her. Great combination. Three skills in a row. I then said, well, what do you think? And they both said, I think she's going to do it. I did not see her warm it up, though. The dismount was spectacular night one, obviously. But Simone did have a number of balance checks. Didn't come off the beam, but she wasn't happy with that performance either. But here we go. Here is the dismount. Full twisting double, it's the hardest thing being done in gymnastics. She added a double twist to it. Just one. She did not do it. 
She said that she wanted to come here to Kansas City and to unveil both of these skills. She was planning on only doing yeah. both of them night one and not night two. So the difference here, she does these two back handsprings and then she does a double back somersault with one twist on the first flip. Night one, she did another twist right there. So two back handsprings into that dismount. And, and also, let's just take a second and also realize how difficult this dismount is as well. Yeah, it's just... Without <laughs> the extra full twist. But what do you make of that decision? You know, I think it's smart. I think she knew that she could go out there and do it, proved it night one. And that's what she wanted to do before the World Championships, to get it out in a competition setting. She doesn't need to do it here. That sixth title is, is just about in her bag already. You think that decision might be different on floor later? I, I believe almost 100% it yeah. will be different because she did not pull it off night one. She actually fell on it and said, I have never done that before in my entire life, what she did water? night one. She said, about night one, I just wanted to throw it in the trash and start over. And yet she's leading the way. <laughs> yeah. Championships. All right, there's the number, Michaela Skinner, disappointing 12.9, and it's in red. Just to give you some help, basic 1.5 deduction or less is green. Very good. And then yellow in the middle, and you want to avoid the red, obviously. Absolutely. And if you fall off of an event, whether it's balance beam or bars, you're probably going to be in the red. Yellow. Flat 15 across for Jade Carey on the ball. That's about where I thought they'd be. Remember, it started from a 16. She lost one point in execution, which starts out of a perfect 10, and they deduct down. All right, Riley McCusker, part of that world championship team. Second recently at the U.S. Classic, second at the Pan American Games, and a very busy summer for all of them, but certainly for Riley McCusker. Currently just outside the top three coming into the night. Gonna do a double twisting Yurchenko right here. Nicely done, big step back on the landing, but plenty of power and that's a little surprising. I spoke with her coach before the meet Maggie Haney right there and she said she is absolutely exhausted. Physically, mentally, they opted to go to the Pan American Games. She was sure while she was there that it was the best decision, but since she's gotten to Kansas City and after night one, she started to really doubt herself on that. She called Riley today because she had junior athletes competing and said, Riley, you need to get to bed, close the drapes, and put your phone away. 18-year-old from New Jersey will get the number for her in a moment. Suni Lee is 16 years old. It's her first year on the senior level. She was at the junior national championships last year, third in the all around there, and she is in second place behind Simone Files coming into the night. Incredibly, and she's actually coming back from a fracture in her left leg. You'll see when she lands, she'll scoot it out in front of her to take some of the brunt of the force. See how she does that? It's in front of her, doesn't create as much force into the ground on that leg. This is the biggest problem for her. Another one is the balance beam dismount because there's not much give at all when you punch on the balance beam. So not as difficult as a vault as we just saw from Jade Carey or what we will see, but just doesn't quite have that power. But as you mentioned, Tim was injured as you see, stepped out of the line, so we'll incur some deduction there, but was injured, so he's just really recovering from that injury. But stay tuned for the next event for her. The uneven bars, absolutely spectacular. 14.7 on beam for Simone Biles. Yeah, I mean, it's a, and it's an easy routine for her. You know, we were talking, you know, she didn't need to do the double-double. That would increase her maximum score by a lot. The thing about it is she actually does it in a lot of ways better than she does just a full twisting double. She, it's, it's tremendous. Got a 14.95 the opening night just to compare the two when it was a more difficult ending to it, obviously. 
Suni Lee, 13.75. You're not shocked that she's in this position, though, are you? No, I'm not at all. She's one of the most talented, gifted people I've ever seen in the sport of gymnastics. Actually got a late start. Her coaches called the gymnastics she came to the gym with as schoolyard, backyard gymnastics. Had to do a lot of switching around. But she is a talent. So from a 16-year-old to a 15-year-old, from this area, about 20 minutes south of here, Overland Park, Kansas, Leanne Wong, U.S. Junior All-Around Champ last year. Double twist, and it's so clean. Oh, baby. That is absolutely gorgeous. Just picture perfect form. Great block off of the vault, and just a small little step slide on the landing. What a start, tremendous. So we'll get the numbers as we continue. No history yet. Stay with us, because I, I have a sense that it's still to come. And she's going after title number six here in Kansas City. Another look as we take you to break. Simone Biles, recognized as the greatest of all time. The Team USA Champion Series is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity X5. By Progressive, make it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. And by Team USA Fund. Every donation matters. Show your support for Team USA. Visit teamusafund.org to make a gift today. Inside the Sprint Center, second time these championships have been held in Kansas City. Late 80s, the last time. Leanne Wong, 14.75, the number on vault. A, a huge execution score, higher than she did day one. So over to another 16-year-old. A couple of 16-year-olds, a 15-year-old so far. We've seen Grace McCallum in a share of ninth, heading into night two on floor. Very uncharacteristic mistakes in day one. Absolutely. She's told me in the past that one of her best qualities is she can have a really bad turn and it doesn't affect her future oh, performance. Oh, she did oh, have a job. very rough first night. Thanks, Star Grace. Good job. <laughs> Sarah Jancy, her coach there, Gonna go to seven. but is able to bounce back. And it's a wonderful quality to have double twisting, double somersault. This is so rare to be seen around the world. The U.S. has a boatload of them, and that was done nicely. Here's that third tumbling pass, a full twisting double back, the same exact skill we just saw Simone Biles do off of the beam. Oh, almost outside those lines, but managed to stay in. You don't see that flag go up. By the way, Riley McCusker, we saw her on fault, 14.65 in the fourth place overall. Grace McCallum, remember, she was just off the podium last year. She was fourth in the all-around. Well, coming into this competition, when we talked to her earlier in the week, she actually told us that her goal was to get second place in the all-around here. We don't really hear a lot of athletes telling us that. Normally, it's, I just want to hit some clean routines. And <laughs> she had some very specific goals. Unfortunately, Tim, as you mentioned, those uncharacteristic mistakes, night one of competition, hoping for 
a little bit of a night, better of a night here. Well, last year she said she was shocked that she made the world championship team. And she was in her own part of that. See Morgan Hurd waiting on floor. The 2017 world all-around champ. Just made a huge splash that year. But night one, not up to her expectations. And this was a huge error on Morgan's part. I talked with her coach before the meet began. She added that in because she had made a mistake on the tumbling pass prior. He said to me, who does this? I can't believe it. I said to him, it's ironic because she's so tough and she wants to do so much all the time. That's one of the things that made her as great as she is today. And yeah. she, she said coming in to night two, Nastia, I'm going to go out there and angry tumble. <laughs> 14 for Grace McCallum. Now on four for her Morgan Hurd. Born in China, adopted as a baby, raised by a single mom, and now a world champ and looking to go to the Olympics. So her might mount day one was great. problem here. And so it seemed like the music started maybe before she was ready. And boy, this is challenging. You know, the last event she did, day one was floor exercise and that was where it went wrong. She made the first pass, night one. Second pass, she had a big mistake on it, didn't fall. So she added in a more difficult tumbling run, which she wasn't supposed to do. And here we go. Double twisting, double back. where she had a big problem night one. What champions do, they endure and they overcome, and boy, did she. That little hiccup at the beginning where the music started before she was ready to perform, she will lose nothing for that. But it would be disconcerting, and she starts and, and gets all the way through it, and totally different than night one. And, and as you mentioned, Tim, she already was thinking about that night one mistake that she had. She really had two big mistakes fell on that tumbling pass that we saw the second one. She actually didn't do what she was planning on doing, so pretty disastrous routine, but she said, you know, it really just seems that my years have been almost the same every time. Might start off rocky, but by the end of the year, I'm really at my peak. That ever happened to you with the music? It has, and, and it really just mentally throws you off a little yeah. bit. I know, I was like, and then I was just saying. She's explaining, there you go. Simone Biles gonna be on floor. That's her next event here in Kansas City. Back here in the Sprint Center, Kansas City, the final night for the women. National championships on the line, as you know, USA Gymnastics has spent much of the last three years dealing with the fallout from a sexual abuse scandal centered around former team doctor Larry Nasser. 
Last week, Congress released a report that found the FBI, the United States Olympic Committee, USA Gymnastics, and Michigan State University all failed, quote, to protect amateur athletes and other young women and girls from sexual abuse. After a training session here in Kansas City, Simone Biles was asked about her reaction to that report. I don't know. I don't mean to cry, but it's just, it's hard coming here for an organization and having had them failed us so many times. And we'd, we had won gold. We've done everything that they asked us for, even when we didn't want to, and they couldn't do one damn job. You had one job. You literally had one job, and you couldn't protect us. And earlier today, Andrea caught up with the new president of USA Gymnastics. Lee 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 Young has been on the job since February. This past week, we heard a very emotional Simone Biles um, express some anger and frustration, some of it aimed at USA Gymnastics. Your thoughts on what she said and how you repair that relationship? I am a firm believer that she should say whatever she needs to say to get through the healing process. I have said that this organization has let down many people, including Simone, and historically the organization has silenced gymnasts, and that time is no more. We will allow and embrace the voices of our athletes, whatever it is they say, even if it's critical of the organization. So you said when you took the job that most likely this would be the biggest challenge of your life, both personally and professionally. What's the most important thing you've learned in the last six months? I would say what I've learned is getting perspective is the most important thing. We are an organization where we exist to ser serve our community. And in order for us to best serve our community, we need to get as much perspective as possible. And moving forward, you have acknowledged that there is a lot of work to do. What are your top priorities? My top priorities are, uh, they remain the same from day one, which is getting to the fairest and most equitable resolution with the survivors. Um, we need to prove to the community that we should basically have their trust again, and we are working on rebuilding the trust in the community. In addition to that, um, I'm working on building this leadership stability on the team. That's really important as well. And I think we've done a good job in terms of a number of different areas. All right, good luck. Thanks so much for joining us, Lili. Thank you. And we will have more here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships as we continue final night in Kansas City. We trust you're aware of this, but as a reminder, next summer, the world's best athletes compete on the world's biggest stage. The Olympic Games return live from Tokyo on the networks of NBC. You guys got the calendar, right? You're marking it off. <laughs> We're ready to go. It's, it's in there. Getting ready to go right there. Ariaki Gymnastics Center. They're building it. It'll be done in October. 10,000 seats. First new Olympic gymnastics venue since Beijing 2008, and it's recyclable. All made from recyclable material. Wonderful. We'll be there. Simone Biles will be there. How about the other athletes to join at Simone Biles? That's part of what this is about here in Kansas City this week. How about the number 13.75 on floor for Morgan Hurd? I thought it was a little bit low, but she got a 12.05 night one. If she got that score, she wouldn't have been in eighth position. She would have been in third after day one. But she's in ninth overall right now. So that's, you think about a person who has won the world championship and expectations coming in, it's, been a rough couple of days here in Kansas City. But first place, obviously, after the first rotation, Simone Biles and the lead increasing to 2.25. She is setting up for floor where we could see something special happen. And, and it is special indeed. <laughs> I mean, even we watched her all week long in practice nail it every single time. First time we've ever seen her do it like this. First time she's ever done it like this, as she told us, just went straight up and down. Didn't quite get that rotation she needed. That's two flips with three complete <laughs> twists. There have been some men that do it, but it's like less than a handful. And, and when she does it right, as she's going to do in probably about 30 seconds here, it is unreal and as well done as anybody man or woman has competed in. And here we go, right off the bat. The very first tumbling pass. Triple twisting, double back. Oh! 
<laughs> Money. Uh, just keep making history, Simone Biles. Someone give this girl a crown. <laughs> oh. I mean, absolutely oh incredible. Oh, was I out? No. Okay. You did it. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. <laughs> the two coaches, Laurent and Cecile, Landy. And that's history, folks. Absolutely. First female competitor to ever do a triple twisting double somersault successfully. In competition, she did it one other time. That's the only other person who's ever even tried it in competition. Three times around with a double back flip. She was wondering if she went out of bounds. You see right there, she didn't. Forget just gymnastics. How many things in all of sports are more impressive to watch than that? Yeah, I don't know. I really don't uh, really? know of any. To be perfectly honest, I'm obviously biased, but and you know, a few years ago, I feel like if someone would have told me that anybody would be doing this skill, even in training <laughs> on a hard floor, I would have not believed them. But if anybody can do it, obviously it's Simone Biles. She came here to introduce two different elements. There are two different skills in the rule book, the code of points for gymnastics, a Biles on the floor, that was her second pass, and she does a vault that is in the rule books. Yeah. She's planning to add two more. She's gonna have four. She only needs one more on the uneven bars to have a full straight. Not even close to being done yet, but widely accepted as the greatest of all time. And earlier this week, in practice, not only her name on the leotard, but also, yes, that is a GOAT, greatest <laughs> of all time. Yeah, and it, you know what? She, she's exactly right, and if people want to debate that, I don't even want to start the conversation because they don't know enough about history and they don't know just how amazing this young woman is. But the willingness, too, for an athlete to embrace that, welcome that, I'm not sure in other sports that anybody is eager to do that. That's confidence, that's belief. It, it really is, I mean, and she truly is in a league of her own here, and you saw that score, so it's the execution. I mean, her difficulty score is so incredibly high, but where she lost those tens are all the landings. Yes. And you know, it's that risk reward we talk about throwing the extremely difficult skills, now has to kind of take control of the landings. Yeah, it's gonna be the highest score of the meet. It's yellow for her, but her starting score is gigantic. Trinity Thomas, the 18-year-old from York, Pennsylvania, who's now at the University of Florida. And remember I said there is a Biles already in the rule book? Flattery. Uh, oh, dear. That was the Biles right there. She fell short of that. I was about to say imitation is the best form of flattery. Too bad, night one, it was really nice. Does it a little different than Simone. Twists earlier on it, makes it a little bit more of a blind landing.
such a shame because it was gorgeous. Night one, and you know, it is not an easy task. She has been competing, as you said, for Florida. It's a different system in college. They do not have an open-ended scoring system. It's yeah. out of a 10, and literally the gymnasts that perform routines, it's about a third of the gymnastics they have to do on this stage. She has done an amazing job to get to this level after the NCAA season ended. So from Thomas over to Riley McCusker in fourth place after that opening rotation, uneven bars. And she's very beautiful on this event, the lines, the execution, but also extremely difficult. She fell on a skill towards the end of a routine in night one. It was kind of a mental break. But Coach Maggie Haney agreed with me on that. Here it all gets crazy. Three skills in a row. Can she connect here? No, she doesn't. Maybe a little bit over-rotated on that skill. It's called a pack salto. But coming up right here, she didn't make it over the bar. Said, I wanted to be perfect in the handstand. Maggie said, don't be so perfect. Dismount. Oh, boy. And this is exactly what Maggie was telling me. She is absolutely exhausted. She told me, I don't even know if she's going to go tonight. Because mentally, physically, the trip to Lima, Peru, yeah. the qualifying meet, the classic, and then coming here. Think about what all of this is a part of, too, and, and that crowded schedule throughout the summer. You're trying to position yourself to be chosen for the Olympics, to, to make the world championship team, the selection camp, you go there, and then you get an opportunity, Olympic trials eventually. The number is sub 12. Trinity Thomas on the floor. There's no way that Riley McCusker doesn't get an invite to the selection camp, though. Absolutely not. Over to vault, Morgan Hurd. Nicely done there. She balked on one of her vaults in the one top warm up right before this and looked really concerned. Her coach Slava right there spent a little bit of time with her, calmed her down, talked about the technique that she needs to have on the board to make this vault happen, and she pulled it off. So the same exact vault that we saw from Riley just in the last rotation. So take a look at the hips, really piking down a little bit on that landing. So she'll get deduction there, as well as the actual, the landing, the hot back. I need like a golf drop or something. Those glasses, the braces, the smile, the world got to know those and uh, fell in love with her at the World Championships a few years ago when she was a surprise winner. Suni Lee now in third. Teenager, 16-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota. And she actually has the second highest degree of difficulty in the competition. Only 1.8 behind Simone Biles. Look at this combo, though. And here's the connection. She did not do night one. Oh! That is four elements in a row. Little short on this handstand, night one. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. And here we go, just the dismount. Unbelievable. She can keep it together and make it to the Tokyo Olympics. Suni has a shot to become an Olympic gold medalist on this event right here. Really? Absolutely. She's that good. Yes, she is that good. And remember, coming back from good job, good job. an ankle or a leg fracture, but it is four elements in a row. Look at, she'll keep her body straight in the air, fly down to the low, and then right back up again. She's not done. Wow. And here we go, right back up to the high bar. And not only are these skills so difficult, the fact that she does them back to back, but the execution, where so many of these athletes lose tens and points, just so beautiful. And here's that dismount, full twisting, double back, two flips, one twist, and you see her spot the landing. 
one step. One of six kids in her family, only a junior in high school. Okay, one and a half is better. Yeah, it was, yeah. That exact skill that I was talking about night one really finished that handstand low, as you heard her say. It's a lot better tonight. So Morgan looks up to see 14.35. She actually said so far in the competition, oh, other than problems on floor, she felt really good about the other events and, and maybe the best that she's done them <laughs> all season long in the fourth place overall at the moment. How many different names that we're watching tonight have, have a great chance to make it to the Olympics? Gosh, too many. I mean, they're <laughs> for, so for deep, the team, right? team, absolutely. There's close to 10 people that will be in the conversation, I would say. Four, One's a for sure. Four spots. Yeah, yeah, there is a lock at the top. <laughs> Told you. It's there, it's there. Wow. That is huge. So Ann Wong in fifth after that opening rotation. You've got four rotations that make up this night. And here's a 15-year-old who certainly is in that conversation for Tokyo. And we saw her, remember earlier this season at the American Cup, she won against big names. And, you know, she said, of course, competing in her hometown, it's a little different getting ready to compete when you hear someone or many people calling your name. So got to stay mentally focused here. Beautiful combination right back up to the high bar. And just look at the lines, the extension landing right on top of the bar. Little bit of those toes flexed on that release move. Short on that handstand. Gonna try to keep her body bored straight here. Double layout. And a big step on the landing. That's a three-tenth step. More than a meter. By the way, Riley McCusker, 13.9 for that effort on bars into third overall. But one more look at this, and no words can really do it justice. So we'll let you watch it as we go to break. Back with a score for Leanne Wong on uneven bars, 13. Point eight into fourth place overall. Well, remember this, at the age of 16, Lori Hernandez, the youngest member of the final five team in Rio, part of that gold medal winning team, and also earning a silver on balance beam. And she is standing by with Andrea now. Terry, I got this. Sorry, I've been dying to use your line for such a long time, your signature line. We know that you've been back in the gym for about a year now. Yes. Give us a progress report. Where are you in the process? Um, I've definitely made a lot of progress. I mean, before when we last talked, I was just doing basics and conditioning, but now I'm actually doing some of those bigger skills, and um, I'm hoping to get out there pretty soon. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to seeing you. So Simone is out here, and she's making this whole comeback trail look like a walk in the park. What's been the biggest challenge for you? Oh, man, for me, it's like, you know, when you take a lot of time off, you, it's like, you know, lifting, a, a you know, two pound weights, 10, 20, and then suddenly you stop for two years. You can't lift up that same weight again. you got to start from the beginning. So I think coming back to square one and starting those basics, that's been the hardest part. Harder than you thought it would be? It was about what I thought it was going to be, but I was pretty ready for it. I'm, I'm so happy to be back. All right. We look forward to seeing you back out there. Good luck. Thank you. See you next year. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> that's confident. Well, you think about that team, which she would be a part of, and certainly Simone Biles will lead. I mean, what what a recent history. The gold in Atlanta, back-to-back -back golds in London and Rio. That's going to be a force. Hey, unbelievable. They are the gold medal favorite for sure. I think a B team, there's only four on the team. The B team could go to Tokyo and win the gold as well. Biggest problem is choosing a team. Yeah, I don't, don't really want to be on that <laughs> selection committee right now. On floor, the 22-year-old from Arizona, Michaela Skinner.
there you go, Michaela. <laughs> After night one, she said, I don't really care what people say. They're going to say negative things, and I'm doing this for myself. But she did back that up by saying, I think I did prove to them, those who felt like I shouldn't be here, that I should. Well, if she didn't, then they don't know a lot about gymnastics. Not easy to do. Step away, go to college, and then come back to the elite level. They're all trying to impress that man, who's kind of the new Marta Caroli, the women's high-performance team coordinator, Tom Forster, who's got that job of getting them ready but also choosing a team. Yeah, and it's going to be a tough one because he has a riches of just incredible athletes to choose from. So, another rotation in the books. Got a couple more to go. Simone Biles will be on both next from Kansas City. Back to tell you, music's biggest stars create number one songs on Songland, and on Wednesday, it's the start of all new episodes as Mac Moore looks for his newest hit. Songland, all new on NBC. Well, earlier this year, something took place in this sport that brought joy to everyone who saw it, and a lot of people did. Kaylin Ohachi's floor routine was viewed more than 100 million times across the internet and earned a perfect 10 for the UCLA senior. Earlier here in Kansas City, Andrea caught up with a recently retired legendary coach. I'm with Valerie Condos, field affectionately known as Miss Val. 29 years at UCLA, a million memories, but we want to talk about that night. Caitlin Ohashi's perfect 10. What was that like to be there and be part of that? You know, you just know when someone is in the zone and every little part of that routine, it just came to life. And she was absolutely in another planet out there performing. It was so exciting. So you have a dance background, so you have a special eye toward the floor routines, but in general here at Nationals, who are you looking forward to seeing? You know, I'm really looking forward to the diversity that we've got, and I feel like we've got such an eclectic group to, to select our world team and our Olympic team from. I'm really excited about that aspect of it. Obviously, Simone, you know, truly the GOAT. She's the Michael Phelps of gymnastics for us. But the other athletes that come forth and what they bring to artistic gymnastics is really an exciting field. And one of those athletes here is a collegiate gymnast, Michaela Skinner, who's taking a year off trying for an Olympic berth. You have experience in this. How hard is that? What's the special challenge about making that leap back to elite? It's really hard, but you, I've just been so enamored with Michaela. Uh, her three years in college, she's like this racehorse. And you could just see she wasn't done with, with competing big time skills. She still did big, big skills in college, but she's got so much more. And I can guarantee you, every college coach here is rooting for her to make that team. All right, Val, thank you so much. Congratulations on your spectacular career. Thank and thanks you. for being with us. Thank you. By the way, I'm still smiling over that uh, Ohashi floor routine. Every time you see it, yep, that's what we're going to see next. Simone Biles beyond vault, and that lead up to 2.75. Suni Lee back into second ahead of Riley McCusker. The Team USA Champion Series is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity X5 and by TeamUSAShop.com where every purchase helps support your Team USA athletes. Beautiful night in Kansas City inside the Sprint Center and Simone Biles resting for the moment, but two rotations in and we'll see her <laughs> on vault next. You have time. How about the comparison? We go side by side here, guys. Simone Biles, Michaela Skinner, they're doing the same element here. Absolutely, the same exact vault, the Aminar. And what we are comparing, first of all, let's not take away with how difficult of a skill this is, but look at the explosiveness that Simone gets right off of the table. Look right here. Pretty much the same on the table. Now look at her toes. Look at how high that is. It is unbelievable. Shaquille O'Neal could stand underneath <laughs> that. It is 
incredible, and the, the power just continues. She, she leaps out in distance as well, throwing no shade whatsoever at Michaela. She, she, if she goes to Worlds in Stuttgart and then Tokyo, she has a very good shot of being runner-up in the world, second best vaulter in the world. It's just that when you've got the greatest of all time, gonna try Simone to Biles. Going to try to figure out how she does this. Here, send it over to Andrea right now. All right, Terry, well, there is a theory that Simone gets her power on the vault from her speed down the runway. So we thought it would be a great idea to get a Kansas State trooper out here with a radar gun. And then we thought maybe we don't need to add that level of anxiety to the competition floor. So guess what? There is an app for that. So I've got it on my phone. We are going to clock all of the vaulters in this rotation, see how Simone stacks up. I'm curious what you guys think, how fast you think she might go. I don't know, but there's an app for everything <laughs> these days. So what do you think? Yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I would be probably half of that, <laughs> whatever she is. <laughs> All right, so we'll see. We'll get, to, we'll get those numbers from Andrea, too, as she watches. But we go, first of all, to Beam and Suni Lee back into second place after the second rotation, a little less than three points off that lead of Simone Biles. And it would be a statement to be up there on that podium in second or in third at the end of the evening for her in terms of the overall Olympic team. Remember, though, there's such a wealth of riches on Team USA right now. A lot of times, it's more difficult to get to the Worlds, to get to the Olympics, than it would be for some of these athletes to win medals at them. That's her biggest challenge, is making the team. If she makes it, does a bar routine like that, she's going to factor that. I in. mean, that sounds like a crazy statement, but but yeah, it's, it's probably it's, true. It, it really is the truth, and and I, Tim, I'm sure you probably would agree with me, but the Olympic trials are probably one of the most stressful competitions for any athlete, especially in the United States, because the depth of this country is so deep that once, as you mentioned, once you can make that team, it's almost as if you're guaranteed some kind of medal. Scoring delay right now, that's what's holding things up. Back to that for a moment, just to pick your brain. I would imagine so, because since being a little kid, you dream of going to the Olympics, and yes, maybe winning the Olympics, but being a part of the Olympics, and it comes down to that, it can, be all taken away from you. It can, and especially this year, dealing with only four members of the Olympic team. Myself, if I were completely honest, not a fan <laughs> of the rule change that the FIG has done. Four people to me just doesn't quite seem like yeah. a team. Right, and they've already made the decision that after Tokyo, it will go back to five, which I applaud. Much harder than it looks. Three times around, that was great. Remember, she has a healing fracture in her leg. Her coach, oh, Jess Graba, oh, told me that it was extremely sore yesterday and they did almost nothing on it. And he said, the beam dismount hurts really bad. Look at this. Big tumbling pass right there, a little better night one. Managed to stay on the beam there. Gorgeous combination, three in a row. A few different gymnasts are doing that now. A little bit of a balance problem there. Probably the biggest challenge for her is right here with that leg. No problem. I don't know how you say that. You back so slow. I don't know how you pulled that thing off. Good for you. Over to bars and Morgan Hurd moving up sixth place after the second rotation. This is a big one for her. She's really great on bars. She won the qualifying competition, the U.S. Classic, a few weeks ago.
beautiful combination right there. Ooh. <laughs> Great fight. Really trying to go for every single handstand. Just the dismount. There oh. you go. You know, night one, so many of these athletes just seemed a little bit off, but there's a different kind of energy out there tonight. And I'll tell you what, if you watch Morgan Hurd, she does so much gymnastics, it's unbelievable. Her coaches have said that's why she's so great, takes three times the amount of turns of everybody else. Nova DeVault and Michaela Skinner. She's doing two, and she'll do that Aminar that we just looked at, I believe, first. Michaela Skinner of Desert Lights. Pretty good. Two big bounding steps forward. Not as good of a rebound off of the table as she did night one, but she made it around, which is plenty good. And so let's take a look at the table because she sometimes tends to twist a little early. You see her shoulders just a little bit, but she does get it all the way around. Huge step forward on that landing though. And what she does, she doesn't keep her shoulder angle completely open, doesn't get as good of a bounce, so her body does not jump up in the air as high as it's possible for her to do. So again, let's look at the table and look at her hands right here when she twists. You see her shoulders are already a quarter of the way a little bit. But remember, there are only a handful of gymnasts in the world today that are doing that vault and almost nobody can do that vault and follow it up with this one right here. That had a maximum potential score of 15.8, as you see there. This one has a 16.0. Uh, 16 now, the second ball. All around titles on the line tonight. Individual apparatus, titles on the line, and medals as well. Really complicated half turn onto the board, half turn to the table, laid out front with one and a half twists. Very nice. She is world class on this event. And she's she's really making a case for herself here, both on the floor exercise and this event right here. The last gym is to compete on a collegiate team and then go to the Olympics was Mahini Bahardwaj, who was, of course, part of the silver medal winning team at the 2004 Olympic Games. Got the number for Suni Lee. Yeah, I mean, it's a big statement. There are those who say, yeah, you can't do it anymore. It's not going to happen, but she's trying to prove them wrong. She is, and it's hard. And she'll be the first person to admit that the, even just the amount of hours that you're training once you get to college, cut, cut that in half, basically. <laughs> and now she's having to go back to those elite level training hours. Tim, you saw that number from Morgan Hurd? Yeah, very good. It was a wonderful routine, one of the best I've seen her do. And in the second place she goes, for the moment at least. And you know, Michaela, to be honest, she thought she deserved to make that team to Rio in 2016. That's the reason she's here. Yeah, unfinished business is how she categorized it. All right, here you go. Simone Biles increasing that lead after two rotations and getting ready on vault. And she will flip the order from what we just saw Michaela do. She'll do the Cheng first. Wasn't happy with her landings night one. Let's see today. That was, it's just incredible. Yes. So much power. It's, it's, she, it's so difficult for her to even control that. Capable of doing an even more difficult vault. We saw it at the World Championships last year. Added another half turn to landing and added another Biles. Absolutely. And look the at the form. Beautiful form and just ginormous air. And she does improve from night one. She has that big hop back. It's three tenths, but she doesn't have a step 
added on after. Body is flying in the air. In beautiful form. What the judges are looking for, obviously, toes, knees, the feet being crossed, which they are not, but... She is rocket fast, turning over her round off and then getting her hands down on the table. It's amazing. Could easily have done the Biles right there. Absolutely. I think she could do another full twist. Look at the number, 15.3. <laughs> And what do we expect here on the second? Oh, well, second ju just ball. about the same exact thing, but maybe even better. She's been doing this vault, the Aminar, which we just took a look at when comparing her with Michaela. Just look at her center of gravity, her head. See how high it goes here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's almost as if she just does these two vaults, puts a check by it, and moves on to the next thing. Like, no big deal. <laughs> no, not breathing heavy, nothing. Uh-uh. Just a hug and walk on. Meant to do that. This type of greatness that we're witnessing here, it just doesn't come along very often at all. Making it look easy. How does she do it, Andrea? Well, Terry, as it turns out, every single vaulter in this rotation clocked in at about the same speed from 16 to 18 miles per hour. Simone was at 18 at the higher end, but I would say this is an inconclusive result of our primitive experiment down here. So the mystery <laughs> continues. Where does that power come from? Yeah, the highly scientific study <laughs> done by Andrea Joyce here in that. But it does beg the question, is, uh, where does it come from? It, it comes, she turns over that skill that she does onto the board so fast, and then she is lightning from the board to the table. There's no air time there. She's able to get a huge bounce from the table because of that. And that last bit, the, the lat, like right, right here, that speed at the end. Turning that over fast and that right to the table yeah. fast. All right, go do it now. Let's see it. <laughs> now I know how to do it. Go do it. Amazing. And it continues. Now one more to go for Simone. A reminder, Simone Biles and the world's best are in Germany to continue their journey toward next summer's 2020 Tokyo Olympics, the FIG Gymnastics World Championships. Come your way October 8th on NBC, NBCSN, and the Olympic Channel. Well, we have some news. We're being told that Riley McCusker has scratched after two rotations. Andrea, do you know more? Yeah, I do, Terry. I just spoke to Maggie Haney, Riley's coach, and turns out that Riley is not feeling well at all. She has had an upset stomach all night long. Maggie said that she did notice that she was tired yesterday, but that's to be expected. I mean, she has done so much gymnastics in less than a month. This is her third competition in less than a month. She was at Classic and then at the Pan Am Games and then now here. Um, Maggie said that she really didn't think it was a question of nerves and Riley really wanted to keep going, and she is not happy with Maggie because Maggie made the decision that she would pull out. Terry? Wow. But it's been, it, we chronicled it, it's been some kind of summer. It, it really has been, and I think she made the right decision. I think Maggie wanted to make that decision before the meet even began yeah. tonight. She was, in, she was in the top three, though. Yes. Well, you know, of course she wanted to finish the competition, but she has that world selection camp still coming up, and I know that they will still invite her to that camp and hopefully still make that world championship team. On beam, Jade Carey underway. Oh boy, just barely holds on to that. Jade is really a vaulter, as we've seen, and tremendous on floor exercise. She had a rough go on uneven bars last rotation, fell off the bars, dropped from second to seventh in the all around. That was, combination, wow, though. that was great. And remember, she is vying for an Olympic spot, really in two different ways, because she is doing the individual World Cups. The winner of those eight World Cups, there are four more to go, earns an automatic berth 
As of right now, with four done, she is the leader on both floor and vaulting, but she wants to be a part of Team USA. He's hoping to connect those three elements, but just had too much of a pause in between those. Has some great landings, was able to stick this night one. Small little hop there. Second oldest of four children, coached by her dad, Brian. And eventually plans to compete for Oregon State. Successful effort on beam. Got one more rotation left. Miles obviously in the lead to be on uneven bars in the final rotation. About that time, Chiefs coming off a terrific season last year, 12 and 4, AFC Championship game, Pat Mahomes. MVP, about an hour north of here, St. Joseph's, that's where they train. Last night, the preseason game got a win, and a reminder, Thursday, September 5th, 100th season, uh, the NFL kicks off on NBC. We've got the league's most storied rivalry Bears and the Packers and that Steelers and Patriots premiere of Sunday Night Football, only on NBC. Training camp, how hot is that, huh? I mean, you're out there. At it has been humid. It is hot here. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Simone Biles in the lead. Suni Lee still there. First year senior. And then Leanne Wong. So you got a 16 year old and a 15 year old. The future of gymnastics in this country right behind. And then Morgan Hurd, too. And the future is bright. And, and the future is now for Simone Biles. Four gold in Rio and looking for more in Tokyo. Back to tell you, you can download the Team USA app for up to the minute news and exclusive behind the scenes coverage of your favorite athletes on their road to Tokyo. Visit the Google Play Store and iTunes to download the Team USA app today. Final rotation. One more left for Simone Biles looking for title number six. And there have been so many big names with ties to Texas. She's not originally from there, but trains down there. Kim Zemeskel in the early 90s, Charlie Patterson, Olympic gold. Oh, I know her. Yep. <laughs> but big names who have ties to that state. What's in the water? <laughs> Nastia? Well, and, and there's even more. You know, we saw, of course, Reagan Smith compete last year. Not necessarily her hometown, but of course competed at with Texas Dreams and Kim Zemeskel there. And many, many more. <laughs> so Biles on the verge of her sixth national championship. It's been done before, but that would be the most in the modern eras, back in the 40s, early 50s, when we had six. Meanwhile, over to Beam and Grace McCallum. We really had a rough night. Day one, fell off the uneven bars and fell off on her gorgeous series here. Side aerial to two layout step outs. Today, she's been much better. That is about as smooth as anyone I've ever seen do that. And she does two in a row. Big bonus points there. Very nice. So here is that series. Three in a row. Perfect today. today. <laughs> yeah. She said after the classic competition a few weeks ago, they tweaked this beam routine a little bit for her to feel a little bit more confident. Changed it around. Same elements, but. There you go, Grace. A much better performance really all around so far. Just seemed really off. 
Yeah, had a big move tonight, though. It started in ninth, Nastia, and now in to the top five after three, three rotations. And, you know, there's our coach, Sarah Jansen. And, you know, she coached Maggie Nichols in the prior quad, and Maggie kind of got beat up. And so they've taken a very different approach, and they've really backed off the numbers and let her recover. She said, I don't want the same thing to happen to Grace. So second after three rotations, one left to be Lee. And what a night and event it would be if she could hold on to second. Just a few weeks ago at the qualifying competition, the classic, she didn't even compete in the all around and tonight is looking for a podium finish. Absolutely, wow. At only 80%, Jess, her coaches say, what's she gonna look like when she's 100? That is Wonderful. some performance. This has been something here in Kansas City. As you say, not even 100%. She's got an advantage over third of more than a point. That should do it for second, we'll see, but Awfully impressive. Double twisting, double somersault. Like I said, there's someone a diamond dozen in the US, but all around the world, that would be considered astounding. And here's that second tumbling pass. She does a double layout, so two flips completely stretched. Really good. Wow, what an, an just an amazing weekend for SUNY. As I mentioned, just a few weeks ago, was still recovering from an injury. Came out here this weekend, looking a little bit like a veteran. So the number for Grace McCallum. So before the others in this final rotation, she hops up into first for the moment, but that obviously will change. Morgan Hurd in fourth place. Remember a big move for her tonight. She was down in eighth place after night number one. Of course, was one of the athletes that went to the Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru. She said she was ecstatic to go. Watch this right here, back with a full. Nicely done, a little bit of a struggle there. She said she was so happy to be a part of the team and winning that team gold medal, but she was very unhappy with her own performance. A little shaky on every single skill. Needs to just take a second, hit the reset button. There we go. That was better, yeah. So she's fighting to get on the podium. And at the last two world championships, she was first in 2017 and got a bronze in 2018. And she's just trying to make the team. 
Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the competition, she really knows that she's not quite at her best here, wants to peak a little bit later in the year. World Championships in a few months. Really nice finish, really nice. Less than a point out of third place going into this final rotation. There's the number for Suni Lee, and even 14. So she jumps up into first for the moment. And Wong's the only one who's close enough to challenge, but maybe unlikely at this point. <laughs> Hugs all around for two who might be on the podium. Did he leave? I say this all the time, this is sincere. You know, one of the things about gymnastics is there's no defense. And so they train together constantly. They're very good friends. Boy, she has looked so much more serious, Nastia, than, than I've ever seen her. Way more serious than night one, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Maybe just a little bit more focused. She had some uncharacteristic mistakes, obviously doing incredibly difficult gymnastics, but perhaps just a little more focused here tonight. She talked the other day about having more anxiety at this point in her career, though, than she did earlier. Well, she has done everything. Last year, after her comeback, she won the all-around in all four events that hasn't been done since 1994, and Dominique Dawes. Won a medal on every single event at the last world. She's got 20 of them. Double twisting double. Much better than night one. Kerr Pow. There you go. Six time national all around champion. <laughs> <laughs> And leaves with a statement. Yeah. I would say so. At one time, she struggled a little bit on bars, but now she's a world contender on that event and every other one. Great job. Over here. Think about the effect she has on a team, too. It's going to be great anyway, but going to Tokyo. Well, and she has been just such an incredible leader for these young women out there. Really the only one with Olympic experience right now, double twisting, double back. And again, after night one, the emotion said it all. And night two, the emotion says it all again. Just a little different, though. If you can watch this competition and watch Simone Biles and not be blown away and marvel at her superiority, I, I just, I don't know. She is something else, once in a lifetime. Did you decide in that split second to do it? You're crazy. Sign your thing and give it to me. Once in a lifetime, and it's a long way from being over, too. The incredible thing is to step, you, you know this, it, to step away for a year and a half and then come back and not just try to do what you did before, but take it one step, two steps, three steps farther. Every time out there, she's not content with what's happening. Well, and that's really the only way for her because the rest of the field really isn't pushing her. Yeah. We watch it all day long, every single competition, really every single year in competition since the Rio Olympics, she has to push herself. And that's kind of what she said. That's why she's doing these upgraded routines. She doesn't have to do it. She could be winning a national championships and a world championships without the triple twisting double back, without the double double off beam. But she wants to be better than she has ever been personally. Her coach, Laurent, says we're pushing the boundaries of gymnastics, pushing our own limitations. It can't become dangerous, but but we are right at the limit. 14, 7, 5. Forget about the numbers at this. Doesn't matter. Just watch <laughs> and appreciate. At a level no one's ever been at. So 
Simone Biles, the competition done for her, it will be title number six. Terry, where does she put all the medals? No. Oh. <laughs> Build more space, Jeez. right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, I know. Morgan Hurd, by the way, 13.95. Going to come up shy of the podium. And, and the podium, you got Simone, so you got Suni Lee, and Grace down. McCallum after Leanne won one on four and got 12.75. So the top three are set. And while wow, Grace McCallum today, unbelievable. She came in in ninth position, had a really rough day one, but really shined today. Meanwhile, Jake carry over on floor in eighth place after rotation number three. I would say Jade Carey is still in contention. I would imagine she'll go to the selection camp and try to prove her point why she should go to the Worlds in Stuttgart and definitely is in the hunt and pretty well almost guaranteed a spot in Tokyo in the individual. Steps out, the flag goes up. Three tenths step and one tenth for out of bounds, but that was huge. while that routine was just jam-packed with difficulty. From start to finish, Tim, as you said, of course, she stepped out of bounds on that first tumbling pass. But overall, a great weekend for Jade. Second hardest floor routine being done in the world today, right there. You know who's got the first. If you did happen to just join us. This has been the night for Simone Biles. Uh, by the way, it was good, just to <laughs> cut right to the chase. But yeah, from start to finish, in the order in which she went here, in terms of the apparatus, on beam early. Night one did a double twisting double back, scaled it down a little bit with still a very difficult full twisting double back. And if you're looking for power, look at this. A triple twisting double never been done successfully before. And it, it, it's just remarkable. I feel like we're running out of words to even describe how difficult that is. And not only does she perform it successfully, but she performs it, just it makes it look so easy. Look at her center of gravity and how she catapults herself in the air. Unreal. In an event in the past, she has said that the uneven bars and her just don't get along. Well, they got along just fine here tonight. <laughs> she told me once she wanted to take a chainsaw to the bars. No arguing with the bars tonight. And a resounding finish like she had on night one. But how about the largest margins of victory at the U.S. Championships? Yeah, there's a couple of other names there, but she is pretty much competing against herself. Yeah, she really is. And she has known that. Her coach, Laurent Landy, says that we can't look at the rest of the world. She has one person to compete against, and that's Simone Biles. Which you have to be, you think about the motivation that takes, because no one can understand that. There's no one else like that. Well, and, she And to challenge yourself to be better, you know you're gonna be better than anybody else, but to be better than yourself. Well, she says that Laurent and Cecile, they ask her to do things, and she's like, what are you, crazy? That can't be done, and then she <laughs> does Triple it. double, right? Yes, exactly. Way. Jade Carey, 14.1. 
floor. Leah Finnegan, one of the local athletes here. Also was on that Pan American Games team, so she has had a very busy summer. Lee's Summit, Missouri, about a half an hour southeast of where we are here in Kansas City. And a very nice way to finish. She comes from a gymnastics family. Four women did the sport of gymnastics. Sarah Finnegan, one of the all-time greats. She said, I can't believe I'm the last Finnegan still doing gymnastics. <laughs> They're all trying to impress that man, Tom Forster, who's got to be impressed. My performance director for the U.S., eventually part of that big decision. Malia is committed to LSU. Sister Sarah, an NCAA championship. Anita Mars. She's the youngest. As we wrap things up for the competition here, and there is the six time national champ now. We get a word from Simone Biles on tonight. And what lies ahead? Remember how angry she was after night one, taking it out on the competition here, night two, running away with a win.